James for the win. It's gone. LeBron James at the buzzer. 1.5 remaining. James for the win. It's gone. LeBron James at the buzzer. Hello everyone, Stones welcome to another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. I'm Mark the Statman Skevich, and of course, we have Trip Young directing today, so he just chose to uh, open up with uh, <laughs> LeBum James with a rare game-winning shot in the playoffs. Uh, of course, I'm sure he's very excited about that. I'm personally excited about the New York Rangers, as you have noticed, I am still wearing my New York Rangers shirt. I've been wearing it throughout the playoffs for good luck. Last week, the Rangers were in a little bit of a tough situation. I said, don't worry about it. I said the Aaron Rodgers, R-E-L-A-X, relax. Uh, and I'm going to continue wearing this shirt uh, until the end of the playoffs when the Rangers lift the Stanley Cup. But we got a lot of sports to talk about. Before we get into that, let me introduce... My co-host for the evening, the one and only Sean Fontaine, ladies and gentlemen. Now that we know that Statman can uh, spell on <laughs> here. So can Aaron Rodgers. That, that, this is true. This is true. But, uh, you know, I'm just happy to be here. That was a real good game that we saw on Sunday. I know you wasn't too uh, happy to see that. But, uh, you know, that's going to be a hard-fought series as always. Um, you know, it was my birthday weekend. I was, uh, I, I, so that, I felt like that was their gift to me, you know. So thank you. Thank you, LeBron. And happy birthday once again to Sean Fontaine from uh, the folks here at Real Fans Real Talk. Great, great to have you uh, when you're not on your HDH uh, suspension. <laughs> and speaking of suspensions, the top story in sports right now seems to be all over the place, whether it's a sports news channel or a regular news channel. The flake gate, the punishment has been announced by the NFL and it involves a four-game suspension against the future Hall of Famer, Patriots quarterback, Tom Brady. And, you know, the, Tom Brady's reaction when one question about this <laughs> reminds me of a child when he's asked, Did you do it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, he's laughing, and he's not taking it seriously. And, I mean, listen, I know... Technically, the Wells report didn't implicate him. There's no definitive proof, but you play the you're you're touching the ball on every single play. You know that it's feeling different, and there's evidence to suggest that you paid cash and autograph game worn merchandise to the equipment guys to deflate the balls below specifications. And and, and, and it was funny, um, uh, Jerome Bettis was actually talking about this, and he was like, at no point in my career did I actually have the equipment manager's phone number. Not to say that they're anybody of, uh, it's not to say they're not important, but why do you need equipment manager's uh, a number? Why are you guys speaking about ball deflated balls or whatever the case may mm -hmm. be? But I don't know. I, yeah, and that's the thing. He As soon as the whole scandal erupted, he's blowing up the equipment manager's phone. So... I mean, is he calling him to say, hey, you got to say this, you got to <laughs> say that? What are you calling him for? If you, you know, why do you have his number? That's the thing. Like, I mean, I want, I want to side with Tom Brady on yeah. this, but at the same time, the Patriots are known for cheating. And, you know, the, the league is known for throwing out random suspensions for whatever reason. Yeah. The rumor was it might be a one-year suspension on Tom Brady. And... You know, I wouldn't even say that that would be too... Uh, I'm not sure. I think it seems a little bit extreme, but mm -hmm. at the same time, you call, you possibly costed the Colts the chance that you had of winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, because when you're thinking about it, all right, these guys that are getting in trouble for these substance abuse things, I mean, not to say that it doesn't affect their team, but that's something that you're doing to your body. The, the deflating balls, that... You know, throws off the whole game. I was telling a few people, I mean, I kind of understand, you know, why he may have done it. Because if you play, like, when it's cold outside and you're throwing passes and you're trying to catch them, it's kind of hard for you to catch these balls. But yeah. rules are the rules, and you can't do that. So, yeah, it's just like, you know, the, the stick em with wide receivers yeah. or any, anything like, you know, you're giving yourself an unfair advantage. HG, you know, the steroids and everything. I know you got your own experience, which is why you're constantly suspended from Real Fans Real Talk, and you just don't seem to learn. Hey. But at the same time, that's something that a lot of the players are doing, and, you know, whether you feel 
uh, it gives you an unfair advantage or not, that's a different story. But this is directly cheating in the game. So, you know, that's, that's like, uh, you know, messing with uh, another team's sneakers before the game right. or something in basketball or something. Like, you know, this is an equipment thing giving you an unfair advantage. Uh, four game suspension. Tom Brady, you know, when when he's asked about it throughout this whole process, he didn't seem like he was taking it seriously, and he's laughing almost like, you know, <laughs> because he got away with it. He won the Super Bowl, and he doesn't care. Yeah, because he, he added another Super Bowl to his vic to his list, and you know, at, at this point, you're not taking the Super Bowl victory away nope. from him. You, you can't do that. So. Uh, you know. I mean, it was done is done. I mean, I, in a way, I feel like if they didn't win the Super Bowl, we wouldn't be talking about it as much, even though... Um, oh, definitely not. Yeah, I mean, it, it would have definitely came up, and it would have been something that would have still been out there, and I guess the, the, the Wikipedias of the world would have been the, the whole deflate gate thing, but, I mean, what can you we, do about it at this point? We would have had a suspension, but it probably would have been done a lot sooner. Maybe yeah. it wouldn't have been as harsh, or maybe it would have just been thrown under the bus, but... At like everything time, else. <laughs> you know, there, there's no way that Tom... I know there's no definitive evidence, but there's no way that Tom Brady's not guilty. The Colts got an interception. Notice the ball was light. If the, you know, the Colts noticed it after an interception, then Tom Brady was noticing it while he was throwing the ball. So well, obviously he didn't. <laughs> it, it's clear as day. And, I mean, whether... He had not, you know, you, you could argue that, well, maybe the balls were deflated, but maybe Tom Brady didn't know, you know, wasn't a part of getting it done, noticed <laughs> it, and then just didn't want to say anything. <laughs> but come on, now you're really, you're really trying to, you have to be a hardcore Tom Brady fan to, like Trip Young, to, to go out there and really try to find an excuse for him. And, you know, I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. We had, we're back on the radios Sundays at 730 and I kind of felt a little bit for Tom Brady a, a little bit because it seemed, you know, at the time they were throwing out a one-year suspension and, and plus there's no definitive evidence. So I kind of wanted to be in his favor a little bit. But when you really sit down and think about it, it's like, the, the on, evidence man. is just really stacked up against and, him. And, and, it's just and to you guys out there in the world, please stop doing stuff that have, they have like a paper trail, emails, uh, yeah. text messages. Those things don't help you out. So if you are going to do these things and I'm not and we're not, you know, telling you to do this stuff, but try to cover your tracks at least. You texting the equipment manager, it's like, really? And, it, and he may have been, you know, kind of quiet about it, I guess giggly, because he didn't want to really incriminate himself anymore, because who's to say that, you know, this didn't happen in other games, you know, so I mean, you never really know. A-Rod eventually went out there and apologized. Do you think if um, Brady would have went and apologized, things would have been better for him, or the fact that he would have had it as an omission of guilt, it will, they probably would have given him a harsher penalty knowing that it's 100% uh, fact that he did it. I almost feel like either way, it would have still been, the the, the penalty would have been the same. I, I, don't, I don't really see them uh, uh, finding Tom Brady or the Patriots any more than what they already did. They've been doing this for how long now? They've been getting away with it. Even my Cowboys back in the 90s when they were winning, they were winning... You know, they wasn't cheating, but, you know, of course they were getting in trouble, but they weren't cheating. So it's like, you, you've had, like, a long history of this, and players are talking about that they've been doing this for years. Not much was really going to happen. All right. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, it's, it's a long-talked-about scandal. I'm sure we'll uh, uncover more and more bits and pieces as things go along. Obviously, Tom Brady is appealing the decision. It might be brought down to two games. But uh, the Patriots also find $1 million and two 2017 draft picks as well. Um, well. We'll keep you posted as the story unfolds with that. But getting back to the NBA playoffs, of course, uh, we started off the show, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> with, uh, with the LeBron James game-winning shot. And uh, it looks like... Um, Things are looking good for, for the Cavaliers. Uh, I mean, Pau Gasol, of course, injured. Myself and Trip Young uh, last week on the show uh, talked about uh, on the show in Brooklyn on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. We talked about how uh, the Bulls are one of the few teams, ironically, that have no injury problems. Yeah. And then, sure enough, we jinxed them because Pau Gasol got Pau, in. So. Jimmy, I'd say Jimmy Butler may have something. Taj Gibson is fighting with some stuff. I mean... 
The Bulls are going to play hard regardless. You know they're a scrappy team. Yeah, they're, they're a tough team regardless. And, and, but what's funny with the whole uh, uh, Irving thing, and it's not really funny, just when you thought that he was going to have a number two man and it wasn't going to be hurt, you know, he left Miami. You know, D-Wade was hurt a lot. Irving gets hurt. So, I mean. Irving on one leg. Yeah. Getting love out of the picture. But they picked up so many pieces. The Mozgov and J.R. Smith and Iman Shumper. Wow, that, those are all former New York Knicks. The, the, the Nickeliers, we call them. <laughs> I, I call the Denver Nickets and now the Cleveland Nickeliers because. It's, it seems like a lot of players that J.R. plays with on other teams, they seem to come. With him, all the you, you know, they out there partying and drinking with him, hey. popping bottles. Apparently, it's not so. too much party you doing in Cleveland when stuff is shutting down. Yeah, well, that's probably why he he did actually say that that was a good thing for him that uh, Cleveland because it's such a boring town. I mean, those weren't his words, but it's not like New York City where you know the city that never sleeps and you could get yourself into a little bit more t trouble with that type of nightlife. But mm -hmm. um. What's your take and uh, on how big of a factor do injuries play in this? I mean, now with Kyrie Irving uh, not being 100%, I mean, do you think the Cavaliers could still pull it off? Obviously, the Bulls dealing with their injuries as well. I mean, I've been telling a lot of people, I feel like this, this series is not going to really go past six games. Um, they, are they play, where are they playing that tonight? Are they playing in Cleveland or are they still playing they're in playing Chicago? In Cleveland. They're still Cleveland. playing in Cleveland. So, I mean, that's kind of, kind of playing to their uh, favor. Um, huh. I don't know. I think that 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 last game was a wake up call. You know, David Black with the with the the possible timeout he almost caused cost them or whatever uh, at the end of the game, and maybe a wake up call. I think the series is gonna be over in six games, but it's gonna be hard fought six games. I mean, two more games. Yeah, I think if Pau Gasol would have stayed healthy, it would have been over in six in the Bulls' favor. But now it's looking uh, a little too tough to call. I think. I think both teams will take their respective home games. I think the Cavs will probably win tonight, Chicago winning game six. I'm, I'm thinking this is a nail-biter game seven series. And we're looking at, you know, we're looking at games that really came down to the wire. LeBron James with the yep. game winner. Um, I, I hate the fact that I have to mention that. but um, Same, you know, same amount of uh, playoff uh, game winners as Michael Jordan, might I add, but all right. All right. Well, <laughs> you're not the stat man. You can't, you can't go and throw those disgusting might, stats. Might I you. add? You can't throw those things out there. <laughs> but um, getting off of that, um, <laughs> the current MVP, Steph Curry, showing why he's MVP. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit sleeping before after the MVP was announced, but and the and the Memphis Grizzlies after Connolly came back from Game Two, they took Game Two and Game Three and. Shocking, uh, decisive uh, fashion, and then the Warriors came out and showed why they got the best record in the West. The series is tied 2-2. Do you think the Warriors can continue the momentum going forward, or do you think the Grizzlies are going to get things together and get back to the way they played in Game 2 and 3? Now, that series is kind of funny to me because it's like a battle of the bigs versus the, you know, the, the, the guards. You know, you got Gasol, you got D Zebo, and, and then you have going against the Splash Brothers. So it's kind of... That now that series, I, I'm I, I think they can possibly go seven games. Um, it's hit or miss. I mean, I, Steph Curry is definitely proving why he's the uh, MVP. Um, James Harden not so much. We kind of see why. Um, but I think that I see that series going like about seven games. Well, possibly uh, the 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 Golden State Warriors pulling that one out. I mean. No. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to disagree with that. I mean, 67 wins, they did. They got there for a reason. Steph Curry was able to figure out, um, you know, their defense because they really had Steph Curry locked down uh, the, in games two and three, and he, he was able to come out there and just make things happen from, you know, three-pointers from a few feet behind. Yeah, the, we... You know, that, not the new for Steph yeah. Curry, but, the, you know, that's the Steph Curry we're used to seeing. And, you know, showing why he's the MVP. So it's, um, I, I do agree with you. I do think it's a, a game seven type of series. I, I, it's too tough to call. But uh, if I had to go with a team, I'm still going with Golden State. I'm going to say a 55% chance Golden State, 45 Grizzlies. That's definitely going to come down to the wire. Because they, they, those bigs versus, versus those small, that's just hard to call, man. Too hard to call. All right, and then uh, a series that isn't too hard to call is uh, <laughs> the Clippers uh, doing damage against the Houston Rockets. And, Hacking you know, DeAndre. Once we see CP3 back there, 
then it's a whole different story. We saw them be able to get a victory without Chris Paul. And then in game two, we saw uh, Houston coming out there, James Harden trying to redeem himself, and then Chris Paul's back, and then it's just pr pretty much complete annihilation from that point on. Um, the, does it end in five games? What do you think? Quite possibly. If, if, if any year that the Clippers play good and, and possibly have a chance to win in the West, it's, it's this year. Um, it could, I can quite possibly see them, you know, Taking it, you know, taking a distance and going to the, uh, going to the uh, finals. If they continue this this route or whatever, they're playing real good. But it's like people are not really used to seeing them going past uh, the second round. So this might be the year for them to actually. Now I'm seeing the Clippers as sort of a favorite to come out of the West mm -hmm. because now you beat the defending champion San Antonio yep. Spurs. That's in, that at that point and not I'm sold already. Yeah. Um, how much of a series are they the favorite against Golden State or the Grizzlies? What do you think? Um, I don't know. I'm not too sure about that one. I'm not too sure about that one. If, if, like I said, if they keep this up and they, you know, they get more rest, who's to say it might be the favor against the uh, the the Golden State or the Grizzlies? But I don't know, man. It's gonna be a battle regardless. That that's another series that's gonna go six, seven games. Also, if that if that's to happen. It's going to be an exciting six or seven games. That is really two of the Titans going at it. Uh, the Chicago Bulls, Cleveland Cavaliers, I predicted from the beginning of the season that we would see them collide. I thought it was going to be in the Eastern Conference Finals. Of course, we're getting to see it a little bit early. And, of course, injuries, which is a horrible part of the game because it just kind of ruins. You, you want to see everybody at full strength going at it. Uh, having the Titans collide, and unfortunately, we're not seeing that in this series, but it's still an exciting series nonetheless. Uh, we also, uh, another series that's plagued by injuries, uh, the team that I thought was going to be a sleeper from the beginning of the season is the Washington Wizards. Yeah. They're losing their star point guard in John Wall. <laughs> still managing to, to look good out there, but not enough to get it done. Paul Pierce had the opportunity to ice the game with a late three, missing it. Uh, hesitate a little bit before taking that three, and it wasn't enough to get it done. I mean, without John Wall, do do these guys have a chance of knocking off the number one seed Hawks? They have a good chance, but if they get out this round, they're not going to last in the playoffs um, after this round. Um, the Hawks are kind of showing their weaknesses here and there, but they, you know, they they are not going away so easily. But uh, that, that's their, those are two teams that are kind of evenly matched in a sense, you know. Um, you got some veterans. You got players like Paul Pierce that are, you know, pretty much make sure that you're going to stay in the game and hope, hope that they don't go away. But uh, if they get out of this round, they're not going to the next round after that. Well, now that depends. If they, I, if they play the Chicago Bulls, I don't think they're getting past them. But if yeah. they play the Cleveland Cavaliers, I'm going to have my well, bias. Well, if, but if, 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 anything, if anything, it's going to be another one of those scrappy series because you got you, you like like. I, mean, like, I think if John Wall is healthy, they could they could give either the Bulls or the Cavaliers true. a run for their money. But without John Wall, it's going to be hard to even get past the Hawks at this point. Yeah, yeah. All right, Young well, fella's not going away, man. All right, well, there, there you have it in the NBA playoffs, uh, the NHL playoffs, Rangers giving me gray hairs all series long. And the last game on Sunday, I was thinking to myself, you know what? I could relax. You know, the, they scored a goal within 40 seconds. I got a little bit like, okay, you know, we're looking good. They're up three goals in the third period. And I'm like, wow, you know, I could finally relax. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Two goals scored, Rangers and managed to hold on by one goal, but of course the you know the blood pressure and the gray hairs are just hey flowing out there. A win is a win is a win. But every single game this playoff season for the Rangers has been decided by one goal. They can't even give me like a two goal cushion, you know, to so that I could relax a little bit and calm down and just enjoy a victory. No, sir. Everything is at edge of your seat, intense action, um, you know, and you, you had the f first penalty shot in the playoffs uh, with uh, Haglin, wasn't able to make it uh, in, in game of, uh, four, I believe, when, uh, when they ended up losing that one, but... 
Uh, I'm just happy that the Rangers were able to come back and uh, in this series, down three games to one. They did it last year against Washington. They're doing it again this year. They're bringing it to game seven. I was not just a biased <laughs> Rangers fan. It is actually happening. It happens all the time in hockey, though. I, I feel like, you know, and then Ovechkin said that you, the guys yeah. might pull it out, yeah. too. Uh, I mean, I'm over there guaranteeing that we're going to go and, and, and bring it to seven and take it in seven when, when they're down three to one. Ovechkin is doing, um, you know, a New York Jets type of guarantee, and I'm not talking about Joe Namath either. <laughs> <laughs> so those guarantees mean absolutely nothing, yeah. and that's exactly what Ovechkin went out there and did, uh, guaranteeing the win. Uh, Washington, the Nationals are hot, and, you know, uh, you, you got the Wizards doing well, but they're, you know, the buck stops here with the Capitals. It's time for their celebration out there in Washington. To that end. is it. The game is going to be at the Garden tomorrow night. I am extremely excited for that one. There's nothing like playoff hockey, but there's even more. It's even more crazy when you have Game 7 playoff hockey. And if the Rangers are in the Stanley Cup Finals and it goes to Game 7, you guys are going to have to see me in the ER because I'm just not <laughs> going to be able to handle that. That is just too intense for me. Uh, but it, it, Madison Square Garden is going to be roaring tomorrow night. And uh, for, for you fans out there, the Garden is, actually has a Rangers zone, which is free to the fans. I believe it starts from 2 to 7. It's right on the side of the garden. You could go and do all those festivities. They have You could be a goalie. You could take shots and all different type of stuff. Very fun stuff for the kids. Uh, you know, those of you, whether you're going to the game or not, you could go down there and enjoy the free festivities out there at the garden. So that, that, that's definitely it's a cool thing that they do. They did it last year during the playoffs, and it's great for the kids to go out there, shoot some pucks around, dress up as the goalie, make some saves, and all, all those interactive type of games that they have over there. Yeah, I think, uh, play, playing this game seven on uh, on their home ice is definitely going to uh, be a big determining factor, man. You definitely can't lose at home. Not to say you, you don't want to lose anywhere else, but you definitely can't lose at home. Yeah. Definitely Not in New York City. It's not happening. Th that crowd just gets you so... Uh, you know, the adrenaline pumping. You know, we saw game five. They were down by one goal, a minute and 40 seconds left mm. to go. Rangers, you know, the, the crowd, you know, they're not like other fans where they just, you know, they're upset that mm -hmm. the team is down. They're out there, let's go. Walking you know, out. They're, they're <laughs> over there. You know, the players get hyped by it. They feed off of it. They went out there, they scored, they tied the game, and then another game winner in overtime. Nothing like it. Definitely amazing. I'm enjoying this playoff series, and I'm, it's going to continue. More nail-biting nail in the next round. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, let's go Rangers, and um, very, very happy to see that. You talk about coming back. Uh, you know, the Tampa Bay Lightning was up three games to none, and now the Montreal Canadiens are, are battling back, too. So that's uh, another interesting series. Yeah, yeah like, out of, out of all the, like, if you go three, you're down 3-1 in any other sport, you can pretty much count it out. Uh, hockey? No. Yeah, but, but hockey, it's happened with 3-0. Yeah, yeah. You know, with 3-1, you know, you could see it happen in, in other sports. When you're down three games to zero... It's very rare. Like the first time it happened, unfortunately, is in 2004 against the Yankees um, with other sports. I, I know that, that that stung me a little bit as yeah. well. But, you know, it does happen in hockey. We saw it with the L.A. Kings, you know, when they won the Stanley Cup, not last year when they, you know, a few years back. They, they were the 8th seed. They came back from 3 nothing. Um, we see it quite, you know, not too often, It's but more often than other sports. But Montreal fighting on. Uh, Tampa Bay um, ahead through three nothing in the series. Now they're up three games to two. Uh, in the West, it was pretty clear. Two of the Titans there, the Blackhawks, sweeping their series against the Minnesota Wild. They took care of business. I have them the favorite, even though they're the third seed. The number one seed, Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Um, you know, they're the one one seed for a reason. They're a great team, but I think Chicago is going to be able to pull that one off. They, they took care of business against the Flames four games to one. And that's going to be a, a, a very exciting series uh, in hockey. Uh, I think it's probably going to be the second best one. The best one would be when uh, Chicago plays the Rangers in the finals. <laughs> and, of course, uh, the Rangers will be taking that one as well. I hope so, man. You know, there's a few teams I cheer for in uh, New York, you know, Rangers being one and the Yankees being another. Everybody else I can care less about.
Yeah, it's it's been a while. So you know, we've had some Yankee parades, we've had some Giants parades. Uh, the, the, they're always fun. Rangers haven't had a parade since 1994. 21 years in the making. A lot of Rangers fans, a lot of the youngins uh, were not al even alive during that time. Yep. So it's going to be an exciting uh, victory. We got we still got to get past uh, Washington tomorrow night, though. I'm very excited for that. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a great game, and. Um, Looking forward to it. And uh, for those of you watching, we are live here on BronxNet Television. We are live every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on BronxNet Television. Also archived on our website, realfansrealtalk.com and YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. we got a lot of uh, special episodes. We've had former uh, NBA great and Anthony Mason. We have a couple of great upcoming episodes with current heavyweight champion of the world, Deontay Wilder, and former super heavyweight champion, tough man contest winner, uh, movie star as he knocked out Johnny Knoxville, the, the legendary <laughs> uh, Butterbean. Uh, another two great interviews coming up. Make sure you subscribe so you can get reminders of when those episodes come out. Uh, we also air Thursdays on BPN in Brooklyn, and if you're a Verizon customer, you could check us out on Verizon here in the Bronx on Channel 44, and for um, for everyone else, just make sure you check out the archives of the live streaming information on our website, realfansrealtalk.com. We also air on the radio every Sunday, 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Blog Talk Radio Network, and it's also archived on Real Fans Real Talk. Dot com and for reminders of all this all you got to do is uh go to social media like us on facebook facebook.com forward slash real fans real talk and also twitter and instagram at real fan talk and uh we'll send you daily reminders we'll post uh, different episodes some funny sports memes different stories and last but not least if you want to become a member of the real fans real talk group page Go to Real Fans Real, uh, just search Real Fans Real Talk on Facebook, and you can request to become a member. Our fan page, of course, is facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk. But the group page, just go under the search for Real Fans Real Talk, request to become a member, and you can get involved in the daily debate with myself and the rest of the Real Fans Real Talk crew. All right, and uh, it's about that time for uh, Shot for <laughs> Shot, ladies and gentlemen. It's the halfway point of the program. The way Shot for Shot works, ladies and gentlemen, we have a series of five questions, one judge, two contestants. Whoever the judge agrees with gets the point. And if both contestants agree, no point is awarded. The loser has to wear team apparel of a team that they hate live on the air right after Shot for Shot. So, uh... We got uh, Trip Young uh, with the voice of the sky today, uh, going to be our judge, and uh, ho hopefully we get, we got Trip Young ready for that. I, I know, uh, you know, it takes a little bit of time to set things up and get excited for r r being a referee uh, in the voice of the sky for the change for a change as opposed to being right here on the panel. Uh, you know, he he definitely doesn't like wearing a Red Sox hat, so that might be one of the reasons. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we get into that, we, you know, before we get into the epic battle of myself and Sean Fontaine, we'll get into another battle with an epic knockout as uh, Canelo Alvarez knocking out his opponent, and he did it in a very exciting fashion of, you know, pretty much what a lot of the Mayweather haters would have hoped for, uh, for Canelo to do against Mayweather or for Pacquiao or pretty much for anybody to do against Mayweather but just haven't been able to do. He landed. Um, a, 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 what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> mic check, mic check. What's going on, Trip Young? Uh, l let me just finish this knockout story. Um, he, he connected with his punch and, uh, and um, as the other one was throwing it, ducked underneath it and the after effects of that punch just pretty much knocked him out. Um, so, Trip Young, how you doing? Oh, man, I'm good. I, I got to give a special uh, shout out to uh, Sean Fontaine today because uh, I like how, how, how you, uh, you know, defended, you know, LeBron early on in the show. <laughs> talking about his game one another day. I know the stat man is, is high on the hate meter right now. Every time As the always. Cavs win, he, he hates a little <laughs> bit stronger, a little bit harder. So, uh, 
Fonte, you the real MVP. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> but but uh, let, let's let's jump into this shot for shot. This seems like week. there's some favoritism here. <laughs> this is like little league sports here, all right? Well Dad, put me in the game. Get my uh, Red Sox hat. <laughs> hey, listen, man, we got we we, we got to play the game. As Triple H would say, it's time to play the game. So, uh, first question goes to you, Fontaine, as the challenger. Was the four game suspension Tom Brady received too little, too much, or just right? <sighs> too little, too much, or just right? I'll say too little. What he did, he definitely affected, you know, the game. They won. It's over. But it's like it's a, it's a culture of, of, of cheating that they've been, you know, carrying on for a while now. I won't say take the whole season away from him, but maybe eight games. So I'll say it was too little. I'm going to agree. I think, you know, burn them at the stake. I mean, this is, this is something, this is not like, like Sean said with the, you know, steroids where you're doing something to your body to make yourself stronger, give yourself an advantage on your physical. But when you're talking about directly manipulating the game with the equipment, whether it's stick them on receivers or, or anything of that nature, you're really just, you know, you, you flat out cheated in an AFC championship game, not even a regular season game. <laughs> this was the this this deprived you know the franchise, the Colts franchise of a Super Bowl victory, which they haven't had in a very long time. So I think uh, definitely you got to send the message that uh, number one, uh, Robert Kraft is not you know buddy buddy with Goodell, and when the, the Patriots weren't going to get away with it. And number two. Uh, nobody's untouchable, not even Tom Brady, who's one of the faces of the franchise. And and that's that's pretty much it. Trip Young, I know you're a little bit of a Tom Too Cool fan, but what's your take? Uh, I mean, I, I still I still would have liked to see some definitive uh, evidence that directly linked my man Tom Too Cool <laughs> to this whole Deflate Gate scandal. Yeah, it, Never mind text messages, all right. It, it, yeah, that, that is, anybody could have sent those text messages. All right. How, how did uh, Yo, from Dave his Chappelle song? say in, in, in the in, you, in, in the R. You, Kelly skit? You're skin? sounding like the Shaggy excuse. It wasn't me. Like, <laughs> caught him on the camera. It wasn't me. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to need, okay, Tom Brady to admit to it while his grandmother is there watching him admit to it and saying that he did it just like Dave Chappelle said in regards to Kells. So I, but we gonna <laughs> yeah, him admitting it wouldn't even be enough because then you might think that he was coerced into uh, exactly. Exa hey, listen, admit. he might, he, he might have been okay. My 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 Tom Too Cool fanism will not allow me to admit that, fella. So we gonna you go would on. see the videotape of Tom Brady going to the equipment manager, having the conversation, and say, "No, that was something that we're gonna use for a movie, and that wasn't what really went." <laughs> you would find an excuse. Where is Dave Chappelle when you need him? Exactly. Yeah, he's. See, I think he's in Africa still. So about I don't know but we're gonna figure it out Statman this next question is going to you overall under 25% chance the Rockets come back to win the series against the Clippers of Los Angeles I think on the 25% the only way that that happens is if Blake Griffin and Chris Paul both get injured for the remainder of the series <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, gonna say under. I'm definitely saying under Dwight Howard is definitely playing how we expect him to play the, the Clippers are all cylinders. They're the only team that's up 3-1 right now. Um, it's just not going to happen. Sorry, it's not hockey. You're not coming back. I got to say the name, though. It's under 25%. The, the Rockets uh, are playing. They were who we thought they were. Yeah. <laughs> They're playing exactly like we thought. I, I got to agree. I, I, I've been saying it all year. The, the Rockets got to show and improve in, uh, in the playoffs. And once again, it does not look like they will be making it out the second round. I agree with both of you guys on that one. So I'm going to go back to Sean Fontaine. Which team has the best chance of getting a win on the road in game five? The Wizards, the Grizzlies, or the Bulls? As much as I like to see my man LeBron be great, I'm just gonna have to say the Bulls. That, that series just been split. You know, every every game is it's been split, and, and and any given night, you never know who's gonna step up. So I'm just gonna have to go with the Bulls right about now. I, it, it pains me to say that, but I'm gonna have to go with the Bulls. Yeah, I would like to agree with you, but I think the Pal Gasol injury, you know, is one of the deciding factors there, and the Grizzlies. 
Uh, I, the Wizards, that, that really depends on whether John Wall is playing. If John Wall is playing, then I go with the Wizards. If John Wall is not playing, then I'm going with the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies have proven that they were they can beat them in Golden State. They won games two and three in a row. Um, you know, they, they didn't look good in the last game in game four, but I think that they have a better chance of bouncing back on the road than uh, the Bulls do in Cleveland. I got to go with you on that one stat, man. I agree 100% that the Grizzlies are probably the, the only team that's completely healthy right now. Uh, Paul Gasol will not be playing tonight, uh, which makes things a, a little bit more difficult for the Bulls, and it kind of evens even things out a little bit more as far as, you know, the, the, the Cavs losing Kevin Love and the little ticky-tack injuries that they got over there, whereas Memphis, you know, is it, night by night. With, with them in, in the Golden State Warriors, another according to your logic as well, that because that's another series that's been going back and forth with the Grizzlies and uh, Golden State winning. So I got to go with Statman on that one. So it's one nothing to the Statman, and we're going to go to Statman for this next question: Over or under eight wins for CC Sabathia this year? I believe he's uh one in, in, in five on the season right now. Yeah, he just got his first win. Uh, he got some help from uh, A Rod knocking down a home run. Um, you know, I think the Yankees are, you know, I think he'll get some help with the bats. I think eight is a little too low. I got to give him at least 10. I don't see that much more than that. 10, 11 wins. He's going to get some help from the bats. He might, you know, show some good stuff occasionally, you know, come out from, you know, um, show some of the talent peaking out there. You know, you see that with the older players and most sports, you know, they're kind of uh off but then every now and then you, you see some of their greatness that they had from the past so eight is a little low it's still really early in the season he just got his first but i i think that the the yankees bats will carry him in enough games where he'll get more than eight yeah i'm about to agree with you on that one um he's had a few other seasons he's had he's had some other seasons where he's kind of you know Hadn't came out, you know, real well at first, and he's come back. So, I mean, the Yankees are playing real well right now. a Rod's playing real well right now, and, and, and those guys just want to win. Like you said, it's definitely helping him out that they're hitting the ball pretty good. And, um, and a Rod, keep, man, keep, keep knocking in those home keep, keep getting those home runs, man. We need them. We need them. We need them. Right. All right, uh, I got to agree with both of you guys. I mean, it might just be my Yankee bias kicking in right <laughs> now as well. But, no, nah, I think that, you know, he'll still continue to, 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 to do better. As the season progresses, and on top of that, if the Yankees continue hitting like they are and, and surprising everybody, I think he'll be okay. So we're going to go to this last question. We're going back to you, Fontaine, for the tie. More likely to happen tonight in Cleveland, someone hits a game winner or either team wins by 10 or more points. The Cavs by 10 or more points. <laughs> Stat man, what you got? I mean, I wish I could say not <laughs> neither in this situation because – it's probably not going to be 10 points, but I don't think it's going to be another game winner. We've had some close games, but um, I'm probably going to have to say 10 or more points. It could go either way, Bulls or Cavs, but um, I'm going to agree. All right. Well, then there you have it, Statman. You are the winner All right. for Shot for Shot. Congra congratulations to the to the victor goes the spoils what, what and uh, think, to what do you what do you think trip on that last question though do uh, you agree? uh yeah I, I would have to agree i think uh going back home to uh cleveland right now i mean gasol is out um you know and i just i feel like this is the point where cleveland takes control of the series and i think they'll end it in, in six games but uh this game is definitely going to be the determining factor and that, and I think uh, Cleveland is coming out to play. They, 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 a lot of ticky tack, you know, mistakes, little bad, you know, calls here and there. And I think everybody wants to kind of get that taste out of their mouths, you know, from from the last game. And I think they're going to come in and, and and perform in a dominating fashion tonight. Now, Sean, how does the taste in your mouth feel after the shot for shot loss? Because I'm going to go, I'm going to let you talk <laughs> about that while I go and get something for you. I mean, it is what it is. You win some, you lose some. Um, I'll be happy as long as I see uh. These guys uh, win this game tonight. I'm pretty sure you're about to find something crazy in that bag that I don't want to win. <laughs> Whatever it is. A Giants hat, of course. You know, I don't really have too much bias to get them, get some of us aside from them being in New York. And we always play each other. And I definitely need to go to that game. Um, but, uh... <sighs> It is what it is, you man. You ruined the surprise for the fans out there. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. As the Cowgirls fan on the panel, 
You, you, you get to wear this lovely, the, the, the old school Giants hat. And, you know, it's a snapback and everything. And it's, you know. Listen, you can't beat a, a good old fashioned snapback, Fontaine. It's a NFL pro, pro line authentic. You trying to sell this to me? Like, I don't even want to buy this. <laughs> Might even go away. Like, I mean, maybe yo, you'll, you'll come to the, to, never. The, to the light and see that, you know, we have a winning team never. here in New York. I have to say, Sean so Fontaine, you America's managed to swag it out, though. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. You know what? I've had, a, you know, a lot of people, they, they ask me, like, well, why? is with my shirt, too, so it's like. The shirt that you won't take off, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right? I wash it in oh, between good. shows. All right, there you go. It's, not, it's only on the show. It's not like I wear this at home and sleep with I'm it. I'm messing with you. <laughs> it's only for the show. It makes my wardrobe decisions. Yeah, some teddy bears. Easy. some some. And, and the Rangers keep winning, so I just got to keep doing it. Well, all right, I get it. Hey, I'm the not Ra- You know the, all the players on the Rangers watch Real Fans Real Talk. They do. Obviously, because who doesn't? They and, do. You know, that, that's what it comes down to. I got to show my support for them. I got to get them hyped. They got a big game tomorrow. Got to let them know that I believe in them. And, you know, that's that's basically what it is. Somehow but back I'll to that hat find thing. some way to get this home with me and just burn it because, you know, this Giants are... Well, yeah, I was going to tell you, you know, a lot of times people ask, like, why am I a Cowboys fan? I, and a lot of people in my family, they're just fans of either the Cowboys or the Steelers. So it's kind of, I think it's like an era type of thing. Yeah. And that's when I when, came up or whatever. Were, you were watching them during the Emmett's. Yeah, Sports definitely. When days when they were winning and then they just haven't won anything since 95. And you kind of. Like, Around the same time, the Rangers won one too, you know. Yeah, that is true. You're going to go take shots at the Rangers yeah. now? You just, <laughs> Even though I'm going for them, but I'm just saying. You just straight hate right I got to take shots at somebody, you know. Wow. That's unbelievable. Petty, yeah, petty. But, but speaking of the Giants, Eli Manning was asked uh, his opinion on Tom Brady. And I'm sure uh, when he was on News 12, he didn't want to answer that question. <laughs> uh, he's kind of like, why am I being asked this question? Because I beat him twice in the Super Bowl. and Pretty much. You know, but uh, he was asked the question and he says, you know, he doesn't, he never wants to see somebody get hurt or get suspended. But... If you broke the rules of the game, then, you know, you deserve to be suspended. So, so I mean, I'm not sure. What, what's your take on Eli Manning and the way he handled the interview? Well, he obviously said more than Tom Brady because Tom Brady thought it was a joke. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, it is what it is. You can't really do so much about it. I mean, what he did affect what who he's a part of, I should say, affected the outcome of the game to a certain extent. And I mean, you do the crime, you gotta do, you gotta do the time, man. You know, you're taking a pay cut. I know he has that supermodel of uh, uh, ex wife. I'm not ex wife, but ex supermodel wife. That's probably gonna be mad about him missing out on those checks. But Tom, too cool. I mean, do, I know they have a, a week three buy. Does that go into week five? Because that's when my Cowboys play the uh, the Patriots. So I'll There's be four games now. Four. I'll weeks. be I'll be very appreciative of that. Thank you and very stop much. Stop looking for the bailout, Fontaine. Listen, listen, listen. A win is a win is a win. Yeah, they were, they were saying uh, how that, that would be two quarterbacks from the same college with uh, Tony Romo and the Patriots backup. So. Yeah. Either way, we'll take it. All right, well, con- you know, congratulations on I'm calling it now, Redskins. I mean, <laughs> you're the Cowgirls. You'll find some way to screw it up. But <laughs> it's Cowboys of old. It's not the playoffs, though, we've, so they might actually win. We've evolved. It's not December, so. All right, we, we've evolved, and, and that was a catch. Thank you. Okay. Well, we're really <laughs> going with the throwbacks here. Uh, speaking of throwbacks, it's time for this date in sports history. On this day in 1874, the first recorded shutout in pro baseball, Chicago 1, St. Louis 0. And back then, you know, the, the starting pitcher played the whole game. There was no relief pitcher. So if you were getting annihilated, you were getting annihilated. Yeah, so they pretty much have had Tommy John. Should have got Tommy John, all type of other stuff back then. All right. 1995, and I'm going to butcher this name. What's that, the last name for me? Martin Brodeur. Ma- there you go. Martin Brodeur ties the NHL record of getting his third playoff shutout in four games. Yeah, that happens to be the same year as the last time the Cowgirls won the Super Bowl, <laughs> as we were talking about. <laughs> but how, how do you not know Martin Brodeur? The, yo, the most famous hockey I'm, I'm player sorry. goalies. He's the goalie for the Devils. He's been the goalie for the Devils for like 50 years. Um, but moving along, let's go over <laughs> to the Yankees. Uh, 
Unfortunately, it's negative news. On this day in 1996, the Yankees losing 8 to nothing to the Chicago White Sox. Then comes the good news. They uh, come back and win 9-8. to Oh, yeah. And a happy birthday to Yogi Berra, Emilio Estevez. Emilio Mighty, Estevez. Mighty Ducks. And uh, my man Steve Smith, you know, everybody remember him from the from the Carolina Panthers, but he's doing his thing over there in uh, Baltimore. You know? This is true. This is true. Yeah, but um, yeah. So did you back to that fight? Did you did you enjoy the fight? I mean, I know, I know that's the fight that everybody wanted to see the week before, or whatever, and it ended kind of early. But was that what you expected to happen? We were talking about the Canelo. Yeah, fight yeah the Canelo Kirkland fight. Um. I didn't really expect a knockout. I mean, knockouts in, in that weight class are, aren't as common. Uh, Canelo's definitely capable of a knockout, but it was kind of like the Marquez Pacquiao where we're, you know, getting, you, you get that good punch in there. Yeah. And that's all you need, you know, so. Yeah, because I, I feel like the, the true boxing fans, you know, they appreciate these type of fights because it's not the big names and they get a chance to see the other guys that fight other than like the, the Pacquiao's and the, and the Mayweather's and whatnot. But I think if, if you're somebody that's very interested in getting and watching boxing, you should watch Jeff Kirkland because that was what his second loss that he had. So, I mean, yeah. So, you guys out there that are, are truly interested in, you know, watching boxing, you should watch some of these other guys that fight on these other weeks. We've got uh, Koto coming up what, in, uh, in June. Whatever. So that's the, the on uh, NBC. We also have Deontay Wilder with yep. his first title defense, uh, June thirteenth, I believe, on uh, on NBC. So that's great that they're bringing the NBC stuff back to to go out there and uh, you know get some free good fights. Yeah. This isn't like these are like pay per view caliber type fights, and yep. you're getting to see them for free. So it's giving people a chance that you know follow boxing. Don't want to pay. Uh, Fifty, sixty dollars for a pay per view, or hundred dollars like maybe the back <laughs> to go and see something good. Speaking of which, the numbers did come out for um, Mayweather Pacquiao, and it was way above what they expected. This fight is, is expected to bring home uh, between uh, five hundred fifty mm. and six hundred million dollars. Um, shattered the last pay per view. I think it was. Um, um, 44.8 million uh, subscribers so it's just a matter of uh, how many were in HD for 100 and how many were in standard definition for 90 and then you have the the, the merchandising ticket sales everything we're looking at 600 million dollars for what is considered to be one of the biggest upsets in sports history <laughs> not, not because of won the fight with Mayweather was the favorite it was just an upset that people spent a hundred dollars and didn't get to see what they wanted to see but as myself and Trip Young had been saying you know you're not going to see Mayweather get knocked out by any of these guys this is not a Rocky movie you're not going to see people punching back and forth it's boxing people are going to dodge punches because they don't want to get hit you know the hugging and everything we see that in heavyweight fights we saw that back in the tyson days we saw that with holyfield you know the boxers hug when they get in trouble it's just you know we it saw that is. you know uh and even in the lighter division sugar ray and tommy hearns you look at that fight that was a, a great fight but it was a, it had a lot was, of slugging there was, there was hugging going on yeah. you know i mean there's it's not like there were many Pacquiao and Mayweather were hugging every single round and <laughs> several times. I think it was a little bit exaggerated calling Mayweather a chicken. I mean, he got he got pushed back against the ropes. Mayweather I mean, uh, was able to dodge punches while he's back up against the ropes. And I was rooting for Mayweather. I'm like, oh, he's in trouble now. He's up against the ropes, but he's blocking every single punch. And, you know, he's just a great defensive fighter. Yep. You're not going to see him get hit and get knocked out that doesn't make him a chicken that makes him a good boxer he's dodging punches but we haven't gotten your take considering the hgh suspension yeah well you know the whole the whole hate for mayweather i think it really just comes down to you know how he lives out loud you know he's he, he's a very and he hasn't been doing that yeah. recently for his past couple of fights though but. exactly i mean and, and, and he even said it himself he's like i don't have to be loud i don't have to be boisterous and all this other stuff because this fight sells itself you guys been waiting to see us fight for five six years now we're finally fighting those of us that actually know better, we knew what was going to happen. We just wanted yeah. to see it, you know? You, you can't I miss mean, that. I, I enjoyed the fight. I mean, I didn't think it was a great fight. Yeah. But I thought it was a good fight. It was what I was expecting to have, see happen. Mayweather losing in the early.
early rounds like he does with every fight, and then coming back in there and dominating in the later rounds after he figures you out. Now, you know, it's not necessarily about him just figuring you out. He's got the, the shoulder injury issue, com, uh, you know, excuse, complaint, whatever <laughs> the case may be. What do you make of the shoulder well, injury? Well, if I'm, if I'm Pacquiao and I really did have a shoulder, shoulder injury, I'm not, I don't even blame him for that because that's, that's probably one of the biggest paydays he'll ever get. Yeah. You know, um, supposedly he they they hit it or whatever. I mean, if it was really that bad of a, a, a issue, I don't think he would have fought him. But now to say he's, he has a shoulder injury afterwards, I'm, I can't really care less. It doesn't really matter at this point. I mean, because like I said, if it was really that bad, you wouldn't have fought him. I think Pacquiao should be sued by everyone who paid a hundred dollars <laughs> for that fight. To get at least half of their money. Well, it's actually a class action suit, I, I heard. The, there is a class action lawsuit against him. Uh, fans who bought tickets, fans who bet on Pacquiao, and fans, you know, all just basically spent or lost money on Pacquiao. He went and signed under penalty of perjury that he didn't have any injuries with his hands, wrists, elbows, or shoulders. And, you know, he clearly lied. Now, his lawyer is saying that it's not, that's not the case. Um, he he injured it three weeks ago, and it was fine, and he was tested and everything the day of the before the fight, and then it was re-injured in the fourth round. Now, you don't when you need when you got a torn rotator cuff and you need surgery to be out for a year, it doesn't seem like you know three weeks was enough time exactly. to heal and of being re-injured. Well, it was a, it was a payday. That's, I mean, at the end of the day, that's, that's, that's really about. Really what it comes down to, because if he gets the shoulder, in, you know, fixed a year from now, is Mayweather going to have him be the, the you know, the, the record-breaking fight uh, next May? Is, is he going to give him that fight? Is Pacquiao even capable of beating him? How is that shoulder recovered? He's, he's going to be you know, rested and, and rusty? Are people even going to care about the fight as much if it happens next year after a shoulder injury? Mm -hmm. So there's no way you're walk, walking away from a, a nine-figure payday mm -hmm. as both fighters expected to make uh, rake in over $100 million. Yep. But I think Pacquiao should be fined or, you know, I think the more, loss more than More than Tom Brady? <laughs> Definitely more. Because you're talking about, you know, you're talking about being paid a ridiculous yeah. amount of money and taking you're taking advantage of a lot of paying fans out there like i think uh, a lot of fans would have been disappointed if the fight didn't happen but i think you know we're seeing that they're disappointed either way because you know they paid money and you know they feel cheated you know because it's you know it's like you go into a casino and you you put a hundred dollars on on black on the roulette table, and then you find out that the ball is weighted to go, you know, the opposite <laughs> direction or something. You're gonna mm -hmm. feel cheated, like you know. So, and you know that that's what I think about that. But um, th there's also um, the mole uh, situation, saying that uh, somebody leaked the shoulder injury information to the Mayweather camp. And, you know, that's why Mayweather tried throwing a few punches at Pacquiao's shoulder specifically, his right shoulder. Well, if you watch the fight like I did, I don't think, it, I, I don't really don't see him being slowed down by anything because he definitely was still swinging like there was nothing wrong with him, so. Yeah, I mean, his left, he's, he's left-handed, that's where his power punch comes from. The jab is more of a, you know, kind of a, a measuring punch or whatever the case may be, but it's not like he was leaving his right hand. He, I mean, he kept his hands up, you know, with, with the shoulder, so if it was hurting, I mean, everybody, you know, you play with injuries in every sport. You're, you got a, a sore knee or a sore shoulder or whatever the case may be. You were able to keep your hands up. Yeah. You know, you're just trying to make an excuse. Mayweather said he would give him a rematch. Uh, in the heat of the moment, as this whole injury thing was coming about, he texted Stephen A. Smith on ESPN First Take and said, you know, apparently he was watching First Take, and he said, you know, I'll fight him next year when his shoulder is better, and, you know, basically feeling like he'll beat him again. It's going to be for the Marciano record at that point. And you know what? Even though he backed out later, I still think that the rematch is going to happen because even if... It's half of the payday that this was. That's still a big payday. You're still going to watch, regardless. 
<laughs> we're still going to watch. I mean, and people are still probably going to pay 100 or maybe they'll lower it to the traditional $70, whatever it is. People are going to watch it, and on top of it, it might even be the same or more as opposed to less because now this is history. This is Mayweather breaking Rocky Marciano's yep. record, and Pacquiao just healed. He's got no excuses now because he healed from his injury. I think everyone's going to want to watch it. People are going to pay for it. The only thing is, if, does May, May, maybe Mayweather wants uh, a different fighter that he hasn't fought before, mm -hmm. and you know, which would probably be an easier challenge for him, and he just goes out there, gets the victory, gets the record a little bit easier than risking a, a judge's decision against mm -hmm. Pacquiao, because now you have him breaking the record. You have a lot of people who don't like him, including the judges, I'm assuming, too, who might want to go out there and say, hey, you know what? This Rocky Marciano record's been out there for a very long time. This guy's a punk. We don't like him. You know, let's screw him over. Let's give the victory to Pacquiao. Yeah, because, I mean, at this point, it's like, who else is there really left for him to fight? I mean, there, there was nobody left for him to fight before. I mean, yeah. I, I didn't think Pacquiao was really a competitor uh, on his level. I don't think anybody is on his level. And we saw that by how great of a defensive fighter he is. And I'm not, you know this huge diehard Mayweather fan because I was one of the people that hated him for his cockiness before. <laughs> but at the same time, you, you know, you got to respect the talent that's there. So um, well, I would like to see it be a rematch regardless because I think it will be a great way to really put it to bed, you know, since you use the excuse and get the record in another fashion and just get a, another giant payday. But hey. uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Real Fans Real Talk. Check us out on the web, realfansrealtalk.com. We air every Sunday on the radio, 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Blog Talk Radio and realfansrealtalk.com. Uh, we are here on BronxNet every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursdays in Brooklyn at 8 p.m. Uh, final thoughts segment of the program, uh, Sean, what do you got? Hey, man. We need a big game out of you guys out there in Cleveland. And, 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 and let me say this. I'm not a Cleveland Cavaliers fan, but I definitely want to see my guy LeBron give him a ring. So do your thing out there, man. Let's go. All right. And uh, my final thought, thank you again, Rangers, for making me proud of you and keep that going. Uh, I'm gonna be, you're going to be my final thought as well as uh, my first thought. Considering <laughs> I'm wearing this Rangers shirt for every episode of Real Fans Real Talk. Uh, during the process and um, the during the playoffs. And uh, once again, facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk, Twitter and Instagram at Real Fan Talk. Subscribe to us on YouTube if you're watching us on YouTube. You can check out all the archives on realfansrealtalk.com. For Sean Fontaine, I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. Thank you all for joining us on this edition of Real Fans Real Talk, and we'll see you next time. Time to Bobby Smoke the hat. <laughs> And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand Sports, gossip, all the hot topics hey, hey. Realfansrealtalk.com got it uh, They got the hottest bloggers Did Jeremy Lin hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, I'm talking about the greatest Go check out the archives, even tell a neighbor Tell them Bobby sent ya From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda Certified coach, son, you know what I'm about, son Realfansrealtalk.com, I'm out, bro Real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk dot com, real fans, real talk dot com, real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk dot com, real fans, real talk dot com, bomb.